In this video, we will be flushing the brake system and bleeding the brakes in this 2001 Ford F-150. On this particular vehicle, the brake pedal has got very spongy over the last year or so. This is a good indication that the brake fluid is getting old and needs to be replaced. Through the driver's side door, we will release the hood latch which will then give us access to our engine bay. In our engine bay, we want to locate the master cylinder. This is located on the driver's side portion of the engine bay. The master cylinder is the reservoir, which will hold a good portion of our brake fluid. For this repair, I will be using the Capri Tools Vacuum Brake Bleeder. This tool changes what would be a two-person job into a one-person job. To get started with this repair, we need to extract the brake fluid from the brake fluid reservoir. To do this, we're going to remove the brake fluid reservoir cap. And after having hooked my brake bleeding tool up to an air compressor, when I squeeze the handle, It will create a vacuum on the end of the hose, sucking out the brake fluid from the reservoir or wherever this hose is connected to. Once you've removed as much brake fluid as you possibly can from the reservoir, make sure that you dry off the brake fluid from the suction device tool so that brake fluid does not get on other parts of your vehicle. We're then going to be topping off the master cylinder with Amsoil's synthetic brake fluid and replacing the cap. Anytime that the cap is removed, you are introducing moisture into the brake fluid. So we want to keep the master cylinder reservoir covered as much as we possibly can. As per the repair specifications, we want to start from the passenger side rear tire for bleeding the brakes and getting this new fluid flush through the system. With wheel chocks behind the front tires, I can jack up the passenger side rear tire about an inch off the ground and install a safety stand. This will allow me to remove the passenger side rear tire and gain access to the brake system components. Taking a look at the wheel assembly, we want to locate our bleeder screw. This is located on the rear of the brake caliper. If we take a little bit closer look, we see that we have a caliper bolt and right next to it is the bleeder screw. The bleeder screw should have a rubber dust boot. If you remove that boot, you will gain access to the bleeder screw. Taking a look from the back, we can get a little better idea what the bleeder screw looks like. There is a hole going down the center of the bleeder screw. We also have a portion that looks like a wrench could fit on it. This bleeder screw has not been removed for a very long time. There is a good chance it is rusted or corroded in there. If we were to put a wrench on it and start turning it, we would break the bleeder screw off. I'm going to be applying some Amsoil Metal Protector. Amsoil's Metal Protector is a penetrating oil that does an excellent job at loosening rusty parts. And I'm gonna let that soak in for a few minutes. I will be using a 3 8 inch combination wrench to loosen this up. However, before I start cranking on it, I'm actually going to find a drill bit that is of the exact diameter of the hole. And I'm going to slip that drill bit into the hole. The idea is 
that if we take a drinking straw and we twist it, the drinking straw will kink. Or in the case of the bleeder screw, it'll break off. If we use a drill bit of the same diameter into the straw or the bleeder screw, and then we try twisting it, that drill bit will take a lot of the twisting force and prevent the straw or bleeder screw from kinking or breaking. However, I'm going to spray some Amsoil's metal protector in the bleeder screw hole so that the drill bit won't get stuck because it is the same size. Then with my 3 8 inch combination wrench, I can loosen the bleeder screw. Once that bleeder screw has been broken free, I'm going to snug the bleeder screw and remove the drill bit. With the combination wrench still installed, I'm going to apply the boot from my brake bleed tool. Next, I'm going to squeeze the handle on my brake bleed tool and apply the handle hold lever. This will create a constant vacuum. With that constant vacuum being applied, I'm going to loosen the bleeder screw, which will allow the brake bleed tool to suck brake fluid through the lines from the master cylinder. I'm going to be doing this for about 10 to 15 seconds because we have to remember that we are pulling brake fluid from the master cylinder and we don't want the master cylinder to run out of brake fluid otherwise we introduce air into the braking system. You always want to be monitoring the brake fluid reservoir to make sure that it does not run out of brake fluid. Periodically uncap the reservoir, add more brake fluid to top it off, and recap the reservoir. For this first side, the passenger side rear tire, I used one full pint of brake fluid because I am flushing the reservoir and I am flushing the lines. After we have flushed through plenty of brake fluid, we can make sure that our bleeder screw is tight. We can remove our boot for our brake bleed system. We can remove our combination wrench, wipe off any excess brake fluid, and reinstall our dust boot. Because we have our brake system components available, I'm going to be spraying Amsoil's brake and parts cleaner over the entire braking system and rotor. This way it'll keep everything clean and if I accidentally touch the rotor, it'll clean off my fingerprints. The second wheel that we're going to do is the driver's side rear. The idea is we are starting at the wheel furthest from the master cylinder, being the passenger side rear, and we are working our way closer to the master cylinder. The process for this wheel is identical to the previous one. Remove the dust boot and spray with Amsoil's metal protector. Install the combination wrench and a drill bit, loosen up that bleeder screw and tighten that back up. Remove the drill bit and install our brake bleed tool. Start our airflow and open the bleeder screw back up. After we have flushed through plenty of brake fluid, tighten the bleeder screw, reinstall the dust boot, clean the brake components with Amsoil's brake and parts cleaner and top off the master cylinder again. The passenger side front tire is third in line in this process. The only difference is you need to move the wheel chalk to the rear tires. Lastly, we need to top off the brake fluid reservoir and take it for a test drive. Mm -hmm.